Hey guys, I'm Brad. Uh, we just got this new bumper pull travel trailer. It's a 2019 Forest River uh, Alpha Wolf 26 something. Uh, we had a hard time finding videos that showed how to winterize it with compressed air that were short and concise. So I'm going to take you through this. Uh, if you don't have the same travel trailer, a lot of these principles will apply to yours. It's just some of this stuff will be in a different spot. First thing I like to do is come up and just make sure both the propane tanks are shut off. We're going to be working with the water heater and I want to eliminate the chance of that kicking on while we're back there working with it. We're going to go inside to the main control panel first after that and just make sure that the water heater and your water pump are both turned off. You guys just come around to the back part where everything plugs in. This panel is where your hot water heater is. Take this off and it pulls up. Down here on the bottom left there's a little switch, an off and on switch. Just make sure that switch is in the off position and that's the uh, electric to your hot water heater so that'll keep it from trying to kick on with no water in it. Next to the sewer stuff there's two drains, a hot drain and a cold drain. Just screw the caps off those and let this go ahead and drain out. So once the water quits coming out, then just make sure that you put both of your low point caps back on and snug those back up. A third drain up here, the drain that's kind of in between the axles on this one, and that goes to the fresh water tank. So if you've put water in your fresh water tank, uh, even if you haven't, it's a good idea to go ahead and turn that drain sideways and make sure all that's drained out of there. Back at the water heater, the anode's down here on the bottom. I didn't have a wrench handy that would fit it, so I'm just using pliers. It's a little bit bigger than the one I had handy. So just screw the anode out. If you haven't turned your hot water heater off within the last day or so, the water is going to probably be warm, so be careful as it comes out. This is the water that's directly inside your water heater. So just let all that run out. And once that's done, you can put the anode back in. Check the anode. This one still looks pretty good, but if it's more corroded, you'll want to go ahead and get a new one for your RV. It's also a good time to put some new Teflon tape on there just to make sure that seal is still good once it's in. Okay, once all the water's out, just put it back inside. Tighten that back down. Once you finish the hot water heater outside, we're going to move over to the panel right here. Hey, look, you can see this partition and along the floor, I've had to loosen two screws to be able to move this partition over. Once that's out of the way, you can see the hot water heater over here in the corner. These are bypass valves, okay? We're going to shut off both of these valves. And what that does is just isolate the hot water heater from the rest of these lines. So as we clean out the rest of the lines, none of that water will get pushed back into the hot water heater. As that's it for the hot water heater. You can throw your cover back on. Just leave your, leave your uh, switch off down here in the bottom so you can make sure to put water in next year before you turn the electricity back on. Next, I'm going to connect the air compressor to the side where it says City Water Connection and we're gonna blow out the lines. This is a Bostitch six gallon, I think they call it a pancake compressor. It was about 99 bucks on Amazon. And this small adapter that you need is called a blowout adapter. Now uh, they're really easy to find on Amazon. This one's made out of pure metal and it was just about eight bucks off of Amazon. It works great. One thing you wanna ensure is that when you turn on your air compressor, make sure that you have the pressure regulated to about 30 to 40 PSI. Uh, I think the lines inside, most city water pressure is around 60 PSI, uh, but you don't need more than 30 to 40 to blow these lines out. This blowout adapter just screws right in to your city water connection. And then the quick connect on the air compressor hooks up just like that. Go to the cold side when you come inside, you just leave that on until all the water comes out. In a little bit it'll be just mostly air and then you want to do that on your hot side as well to make sure you get all the stuff out of both sides all the water out of both sides
While I'm letting this water out, I like to come over at some point and turn on the water pump just for about 15 seconds just to get any water that's trapped inside the pump back into the line so that we can uh, evacuate that water as well. As we're in the bathroom now, we're going to do the exact same thing. <laughs> Got most of the water out in the kitchen. The lines are pretty clean. So we're over at the at the potty now. Okay, take two on how to uh, do the toilet. Close the lid first because we just gave ourselves a leg bath with toilet water. <laughs> <laughs> Press the pedal a little bit and let the water get out of the commode and drain down. Hey guys, we're going to do the bath next, alright? Just go to both sides. Make sure all the water is out. But I'm also going to turn one on and check the shower head. Before you drain the shower head, make sure it's pointed away from you. Another lesson learned. <laughs> Good to go. Come around front. Don't forget to do your shower drain. Ooh. There's plenty of water left out here. Once that's done, we've got all the water out of the lines. We just need to put a little antifreeze down in the drain. Okay, folks, the last thing we're going to do is take some RV antifreeze. And I'm going to pour about two cups directly into the kitchen drain, okay? Now what that's going to do, it's going to come down here and, and stay right here in this trap area and keep this little small area that never drains from freezing. Okay, we're going back into the bathroom now. We're going to do the exact same thing for the sink drain. Just pour about two cups down in there. It'll protect the trap under the sink. Over here at the bath, we'll do the same thing. Pour about two cups inside the bath. Finally, into the commode, pour about two cups. That's going to go down into the tank, and we're going to flush that down. And then we're going to pour about one more cup and just leave it right on top there. And that'll help preserve that seal on the commode. Okay, guys, that's it for winterizing your RV. Thanks for watching. I know this video is not going to be perfect, but hopefully it helps you with yours. Uh, one last thing. We talked about the water heater down below and making sure you open those valves before you turn it on. I'm going to leave myself a note inside here by the kitchen sink and just wedge it in so that I can remember to open those bypass valves and not burn out the water heater when we get started again. So thanks for watching. If the video helps you out, please consider uh, giving us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We're going to take this thing on the road full time in September of 2019, and I will take you with us. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Why'd you put this here?